Good afternoon. I hope that everyone's having a great day so far and appreciate everyone's time for sitting in on this webinar. Uh, my name is Hideyuki Terashima and I'm an environmental geologist at the Illinois State Water Survey at the University of Illinois, where we manage our program wateropera.org. I know it shows my name as Steve Wilson. He's my supervisor. He actually started this program, but uh, just to, not to get everyone confused, um, I'll be the one that will be speaking today. So during this presentation, I'll be introducing to you about wateropera.org, uh, what exactly this website is, and how this website is a useful tool for professionals working in the water and the wastewater industry, while highlighting publicly available resources with a focus on on-site wastewater resources for tribal systems. Uh, before I start, I wanted to quickly go over some of the housekeeping stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and will be uploaded to our water, wateroperator.org YouTube channel once the webinar is over. Uh, we have not applied for any operator or environmental health professional credits, but we will be more than happy to offer you a certificate of attendance or help you complete any forms required by your certification body if you're interested. Uh, please reach out to us via our email address at info at wateroperator.org if you need any assistance. Additionally, uh, this web webinar will be presented on the GoToWebinar platform. For those that have not used GoToWebinar before, you should see a console similar to what I've shown on the slide. Uh, there is a question section where you can, uh, where you'll be able to submit any questions you may have throughout the webinar, uh, which we will, we will review at the end. So feel, please feel free to submit any questions whenever you have something that you want to submit. So this will be the outline of the presentation today. Uh, I'll start off by introducing wateropera.org while giving an overview of what kind of website it is, what are the services it offers, and the tools that operators and municipalities, communities can use to further their knowledge on what water and wastewater management. I'll then highlight some of the publicly available resources that have been developed by various organizations and guide you through our website on how you can find these resources, uh, as well as similar resources. I've done similar presentations in the past, but we always focus on a specific topic and we always highlighted resources related to that topic. Uh, but for this presentation, I'll focus more on highlighting resources related decentralized or on-site wastewater treatment. I'll also highlight several more tribal community focused resources uh, since that is, uh, that is mentioned in the title of this webinar. Uh, then finally, I'll discuss some of the other resources and features that you can find on our site. So what exactly is wateropera.org? It's a website which we developed at the University of Illinois in collaboration with the Rural Community Assistant Partnership, or RCAP, with funding from the US EPA. It serves as a clearinghouse of public available resources to help water and wastewater system operators with a focus on small systems. Uh, we have a team of staff that scour the internet to find and collect any publicly available information or resources that are that we find useful for operators. And we provide a means uh, for users to search for and access those information easier th through our website. So uh, rather than having to sift through pages of search results on Google, maybe if you Google, you know, a certain treatment technology, um, you might get pages of search results and some of them could be ads, some of them could be um, not relevant, some of them could be um, malicious sites. Uh, wh whatever you can find on our website, we've actually gone through, checked every resources uh, and we make sure that any resource you can find on our website is relevant for, again, operators. Um, also, you might you know, find a useful resource from bigger organizations like AWWA or WEF, uh, but sometimes their resources are, are not sometimes, most of the time they'll be behind a paywall and you'll, uh, for a lot of small systems, they might not have the budget to be able to afford those resources. Every resource you can find on our website is public available information. Uh, and to use our website, you don't even have to register. There's no membership cost. Um, you can just get on our website and start using it right away. And if operators ever have trouble finding certain information, they can always call us or email us and we'll help them. We'll try to help them find their, their the specific information they're looking for, or at least try to connect them with someone that will be able to help them out. So how do we find these resources and what exactly do we look for? Uh, we have a database of over 800 organizations, such as national organizations like EPA, AWWA, WEF, as well as individual state agencies, regional association, and even vendors. Uh, we also include many tribal organizations like Indian Health Services and the Inner Tribal Council of Arizona. Uh, each of our staff visits through websites and looks for any information on events like operator trainings, webinars, conferences, pretty much any event that offers CUs for operators. Um, even if we'll include that. We'll, those are the information that we'll, we look for. Even if they don't offer credits, if an event is free and useful, 
for operators, like many EPA webinars, we will collect the information as well. We also look for public available resources such as fact sheets, reports, manuals, uh, past conference presentations, any kind of technical document that can be helpful for operators, especially small system operators, we'll, we try to focus on those. We've been searching and collecting these resources since 2009 and currently have collected over 15,000 documents, I believe, and we catalog over 12,000 events every year. Uh, so the website was actually first called smallwatersupply.org, but we rebranded to wateroperator.org around 2016. The website was originally developed for operators of rural communities where they might not have had the time or to search for technical resources or might not have the internet infrastructure to be able to download large um, files or P, you know, PDF manual files. So we made this website to for operators to be able to search for these resources, get a quick description of the of the resource they're looking for uh, so they can either decide, you know, oh, that's the specific resource I'm looking for. I'm going to actually download that. So uh, that's where our goal is. We're, we're out there to provide operators uh, a public service to help them better with better their compliance and better their operations. Uh, so after we collect these resources or these um, information, we display that through our calendar and library tool on our website. So our nationwide calendar tool is one of our main feature tool, one of the tools that are featured on our website, and it's meant to help operators save time from having to search through numerous organizations website and find all the relevant events in a single calendar. Uh, similarly, we collect the most useful publicly available resources like um, fact sheets, case studies and display that on our document library. Both the calendar and the library utilize an extensive search functionality, so you can easily find information you're looking for. And I'll make sure to give you, a, I'll make sure to show screenshots of uh, how to actually search for these uh, inf these resources on our website later in the presentation. Uh, so for each entry, we also make sure to provide a complete summary of the most important details. So for example, like documents, we make sure to provide a short summary of the document as well as you know, where we found the information, uh, the exact URL to the document, to the host website, um, as well as information on the organization that we got the document from. Uh, for events, we make sure to provide a complete summary of the, the event details, uh, the cost, CUs, location, uh, contact information, any information that an operator would need to know to be able to decide whether they want to actually take that course we include in our uh, on our website. Uh, in the past, we've heard from many operators that they've found our nationwide calendar to be an excellent tool to find events that they, they never knew existed. And we've gotten calls and emails from many operators saying, hey, I need to get X number of credits by the end of the year. Can you, or end of the month, can you help me find uh, events or online event opportunity or opportunities that I can take from my office so I don't have to leave my, you know, treatment facility? And we've helped operators many times regarding questions like that. Um, we've also had various vendors reach out, reaching out to us, asking to have their events featured on their website. Many times they don't seek pre-approval, but uh, we always tell them, hey, if you can get them approved, we'll be more than happy to get them added to our website. And we've actually had several vendors go through their trouble to get their events certified which, so we, we can include it in our calendar, which is fantastic. Um, so these are the, the basic, uh, th those are the two main features that are the tools you can find on our website. Again, I'll give you a demonstration of uh, how to actually use those tools. But um, let's go on. Oh, and so this is the uh, front page of our website. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's just wateropera.org. Just I mentioned, you don't have to register or sign in. You can just get on there and start using it. Um, there's a menu bar at the top that you can navigate to access all the individual tools. Um, we try to also try to make our website as mobile friendly. So if an operator needs to access our site out in the field, uh, our website should also function properly on mobile devices. And all, all the hi uh, resources highlighted today will also be searchable through our website. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, we deal with a wide range of topics, and every resource we add is tagged with a specific category, which gets integrated into our search engine. Here's a list of categories or filters that we use to categorize events, just to give you an idea what kind of topics you can find on our website. I'm also a big fan of making graphics. So I really wanted to include something visual on this slide. So this chart shows the breakdown of the categories or the topics covered from around 13,000 events, which we added during 2022. It, so the chart really just highlights how many of the events we add, focuses on operation maintenance, water wastewater treatment, and certification and certification prep. But you also see uh, topics like decentralized wastewater systems, which is the topic today that we're talking about today. Um, tribal should be also another uh, category that you can find on there. Um, water security, that's a big thing right now. Lead and copper is another topic that it's more popular because of the revised lead and copper rule. Um, it's actually interesting because looking at this, uh, looking at past data, we can see how certain 
topics have increased over the past year. Like when COVID originally started, there were much less, you know, safety related courses uh, but, or emergency response related courses. But since that happened, there's been a lot more of, you know, pandemic response. How do you respond to something like that or something like COVID lockdowns happen again? So it's been, there's been a lot of increase in, uh, in trainings related to that, which is also always interesting to see. So uh, now I'll be now I'll, I'll go through some slides highlighting some of the resources that again I mentioned that I'll be highlighting today. Um, I mentioned earlier that I'll be focusing on highlighting on-site uh, wastewater resources. The reason I focus on that topic is because of EPA's renewed decentralized wastewater partnership, which brought EPA and various national organizations representing on-site wastewater professionals to come together to improve their performance and management of on-site systems. Uh, this partnership is renewed periodically, and most recently in 2020, it brought together 20 partners, including RCAP, to work together to encourage uh, proper management of on-site systems. RCAP has been a proactive about this effort and even started a wastewater working group to develop new on-site wastewater resources and for professionals to share their experiences. UBIS is also part of this group and our efforts include sharing on-site resources through events like these. And just a heads up that we are, we at the UBI are in the process of developing a new website similar to wateroperate.org, specifically that, uh, that focuses specifically on on-site wastewater for on-site wastewater professionals, which we're aiming on releasing to the public in the near future. Uh, so here is, is the overview of the type of resources I'll be covering today. Again, these will all be public available resources and majority will focus on on-site wastewater. Uh, these resources should assist communities and municipalities involved with deciding how their community wastewater should be managed. Um, on-site professionals who are looking for technical resources or case studies on alternative treatment methods and even resources for homeowners to better manage their septic systems, which can be, I'm sorry, on-site systems, which can also be uh, used by communities to educate their local homeowners. Also cover EUS EPA's on-site wastewater clearinghouse, uh, resources to better understand funding sources for septic system project, and even resources focusing on tribal on-site wastewater management. Uh, and after covering those resources, I'll also highlight some of the non-on-site resources uh, that we also feature in our website, if we have time for that. And I'll also showcase uh, some of the resources that can be helpful for drinking and uh, drinking water and municipal wastewater operators. So first, uh, we'll look at the homeowner resource from NARA, the National On-Site Water Wastewater Recycling Association. Uh, NARA is, a, is, I believe, the largest organization in the U.S. that's dedicated to educating on-site professionals and provides public service to homeowners. Uh, one of their mission is to provide better public awareness of the environmental, economic, uh, and public health benefits of on-site systems. Um, they host various resources that are targeted for homeowners on their website. Uh, there are, most of them are all publicly available as well. They're great resources. Uh, one of the resources that they do have is the Homeowners On-Site System Guide, which is shown on the left image on this page or on this slide. Uh, it's a two-page fact sheet that NARA developed to help homeowners keep track of important information like permits, system information, ma maintenance records, um, even installer contact information. It's just meant to be a short fact sheet uh, that contains you know, do's and don'ts, how to properly operate a septic system so it's working effectively, um, basic education on how a septic system functions uh, so homeowners are more aware about what happens inside a septic system and how uh, the treated water is further treated through a drain field, highlighting the importance of maintaining a drain field along a septic system. Uh, NARA also has a searchable tool shown on the right to help connect homeowners to subjects professionals that are narrow members. So if, if a, ever a homeowner ever has questions or needs to search for a provi specific provider within, you know, within a certain proximity to their home, um, this tool will help them find narrow members that will be able to help uh, homeowners out in terms of whether it's get needing service, uh, just getting a simple answer questioned, or you know, just uh, or getting connected to other narrow members that can help the homeowner out. Uh, through our sister program, the Power of Well class at the Illinois State Water Center or the University of Illinois, uh, it's another EPA funded program where we teach homeowners and individual well owners about best practices for maintaining their private wells. Uh, we actually expanded our existing existing private well assessment tool to include on-site wastewater system as well. So this expanded tool, which we work with NARA and RCAP to develop, provides on-site system owners the education and information necessary to better understand their subject system or their on-site system. It's a tool, it's a fillable PDF, and it's available to download on our privatewellclass.org website. Um, we also host a, we also hosted a webinar last week on the assessment tool, and it's currently available to view on our, on our Private Well Class YouTube channel. Um, it's a webinar at an hour long, and it highlights the tool 
and it provides examples of the Cessna being used at two uh, individual uh, two sites that uh, our staff visited earlier in the month. It's an uh, eight-page assessment. Um, it's an eight-page document. It contains 14 sections where uh, users can input general site location information like system location, discharge location, uh, household size, water usage, as as well as more technical information like landscape properties, uh, geology properties, soil properties, and much more. Um, the tool uh, the tool also includes recommendations and suggestions of certain areas that should be checked with on-site professionals. Um, it can be used independently, but uh, also will be, it, it'll also complement our private assessment tool as well. Um, if you'd like more information about that assessment, please feel free to reach out to us through our uh, wateroffer.org email just showing the screen. But again, I just wanted to highlight this uh, since we recently, we just published this and we worked with Art and Aura and RCAP to develop this great tool. So it's available, it's public available and it's available for anyone to download. Uh, the National Environment Toll Services Center, uh, looking at the West Virginia University, also has on-site wastewater resources for homeowners. The left screenshot is how their subject systems page looks like. Uh, they house a series of fact sheets and technical documents covering topics such as maintaining a septic system uh, while answering questions like when to pump a septic tank, uh, what can I flush or not flush. Uh, other topics include enhancing septic efficiency uh, or septic tank efficiency, proper landscaping for septic systems, soil evaluation techniques, and soil characteristics. Uh, what to do when a septic tank floods, uh, source water protection methods, and just much more. The screenshot to the right is an example of how these fact sheets look like. They generally range from a page to several pages. Um, I think the, the longest one I saw was 10 pages, but it's easily uh, accessible. It's pretty uh, easy to understand, and it really helps homeowners to better understand what exactly they should be looking for regarding their on-site wastewater systems. Uh, the same page also has a list of septic system alternatives on the right side of the page, which highlights alternative on-site wastewater management technologies, like uh, more advanced technology like filtration, uh, constructive wetlands are something new that a lot more research is coming out these days, and uh, even aerobic treatment systems um, or combined aerobic tre treatment systems with other alternative systems to enhance efficiency. Uh, each of those pages, it provides a simplified overview of how the system works. It has uh, this diagrams or displays of cross-sectional drawings of the treatment units so homeowners can better understand how these systems function and to have the uh, knowledge to decide what's the best option to treat their wastewater needs. A lot of times we hear from homeowners that you know they, they might not even know they have a septic system. Even if they have a septic system, they probably, you know, they, they might not know where their drain field is. They might not know how their actual septic system looks like inside. Um, resources like these short fact sheets like these really help homeowners better understand how exactly uh, their septic systems function or their on-site system functions and uh, exactly where to keep track of for maintaining better maintenance or operations. Uh, moving on to resources geared towards municipalities and communities, uh, I'll be highlighting more technical resources such as case studies which can help community planners, uh, health departments, or even homeowners to explore alternative on-site wastewater management strategies. So US EPA has various community case studies, which highlights EPA's five management model for better on-site wastewater management. Uh, the management models include homeowner awareness, maintenance contracts, operating permits, operation and maintenance by responsible management entities or RMEs, and ownership by RMEs. Uh, just to give you a background, RMEs are agencies or organizations that manage on-site wastewater infrastructure. Um, they're basically agencies there to help and rather than having homeowners maintain their on-site uh, wastewater systems, the RMEs will be the ones in, in charge of managing them. And for communities where homeowners are less proactive to maintain their septic systems, having an agency like RME will be a great alternative. Uh, so the purpose of these models uh, that I mentioned, or the five models, is to provide a guide to communities to match the needed management approaches uh, to the potential public health and water quality risks from the usage of on-site wastewater systems in a particular area. So for example, if your community is, again, proactive with learning about on-site best practices, uh, homeowner awareness might be sufficient. But if your community is less proactive, a management entity like an RME would be more ideal to manage the community's on-site systems to, re again, reduce public health and water quality issues associated with failing on-site systems. The case studies show how communities can implement these management approaches to meet local wastewater management needs. Uh, there's 14 case studies total, and each are broken up into individual downloadable, downloadable fact sheets as well. 
Uh, there is also a report titled Compendium of Case Studies of Individual and Clustered Wastewater Management Programs, uh, which, compli which compiles all the case studies into a single report. Uh, the report can be found on that subject systems case study page, and the right screenshot is an example summary of one of the case studies. Uh, this example highlights how an unsewered resort community by Lake Panorama, Iowa, created an on-site wastewater management district to implement and manage six cluster systems to protect their um, lake water quality and accommodate community growth. So looking at uh, case sites like that will really help communities to better understand how other communities are uh, implementing these innovative new methods for managing on-site systems. Along with case studies, EPA also has summaries of wastewater demonstration projects from 25 states where EPA invested over $35 million to demonstrate on-site wastewater treatment technologies and innovative management programs to various communities. These demonstration projects have been vital in laying the groundwork for future on-site wastewater projects and revitalizing communities through the installation and management of new on-site systems. Uh, communities implementing similar on-site wastewater project or management techniques might find these reports valuable since they provide an overview of the technologies used, analysis of the cost, uh, monitoring data, lessons learned, and uh, the current set of the project if they're, if they're still ongoing as well. Uh, EPA published the Compendium of Decentralized Wastewater Demonstration Grant Project Report, which also compiles all the individual project summaries into a single 59-page report. Uh, each project is summarized roughly into three pages and includes an overview of the project, the method used to engage communities to agree to a new on-site wastewater management program, um, overview of the on-site wastewater technologies used, monitoring results from implementing those on-site technologies, and just uh, basic lessons learned for including how community engagement is vital to make sure these systems are actually running properly and for communities and states to work together to promote um, homeowner education or knowledge education between um, the homeowners and management entities. The report also highlights how alternative systems are also successful in treating nutrients and bacteria loads compared to conventional systems, and which is Definitely something that a lot of communities that are near water bodies, like the New England area, with where, where the Chesapeake Bay um, is, there uh, there they have a lot more stringent wastewater discharge requirements, even for a uh, decentralized wastewater system as well. So, looking at reports like this will better help uh, communities uh, adapt to those situations with on, uh, failing on-site systems or needing to have better management of their communities' on-site wastewater systems. Uh, the left screenshot is an example of one of those summaries, and it shows how the city of Syracuse, New York, replaced failing subsec systems with cost-efficient pre-engineered enhanced treatment units to protect their lake watershed. Uh, EB also has a web page where users can search for state-specific summaries, which is shown on the right side. Uh, if you're looking for additional technical resources, EPA manages a searchable clearinghouse of wastewater technology. Uh, or Scout, which is a clearinghouse of EPA resources showcasing the cost effectiveness and performance of innovative alternative wastewater treatment technologies. The clearinghouse also includes information for both centralized and decentralized treatment systems, as well as even water reuse technologies. Uh, they're, all, they're all separated into three different searchable databases, um, so there is a specific decentralized one. Uh, the resources featured include reports, case studies, and webinars on adopted technology and solutions. Uh, they're mostly EPA resources, uh, and you know EPA develops great open, public available resources. So it's definitely worth checking out to see if there's any interesting um, pilot studies or case studies that might be beneficial for for communities working with septic or up trying to update on-site wastewater systems within their communities. Uh, it's also the clearinghouse is also intended to help small, mid-sized, and decentralized communities about wastewater solutions that are also available. Uh, the left screenshot shows the main page of the clearinghouse, and uh, you, I, you don't have to register. Everything is just publicly available on there. You can just get on there and start using their database as well. Uh, EPA also has a web page uh, on technical resources on te septic systems and other on-site wastewater technologies. The screenshot to the right of the slide shows how that web page looked like. Uh, the page features fact sheets on various on-site technologies, including you know, septic, conventional septic systems, soil absorption systems, different uh, different filtration methods, um, and much more. Each fact sheet provides a summary of the treatment technology, advantages and disadvantages of using a certain technology, um, design considerations that should be uh, considered for implementing that specific technology, the operation maintenance required, 
and cost estimates of implementing and operating that specific uh, treatment technology. The image on the center of the slide is an example of how the septic system, uh, septic tank fact sheet looks like. It includes figures, general information, as well as references to other EPA fact sheets to better understand uh, how those systems work. The page also includes a list of links to uh, state information on approved advanced on-site treatment technologies and a list of training centers offering classes on on-site wastewater treatment for those who want to learn more about on-site wastewater management um, for those or for those who are trying to become licensed professionals. Uh, and for many communities, funding might be the main barrier to get on-site wastewater projects started. Um, in order to alleviate the financial burden for small and rural communities, various state and federal agencies have provided funding opportunities focused on uh, water, infrastructure, water infrastructure projects, uh, controlling non-point source pollution, and low-income homeowner assistance, which can be used to finance on-site wastewater projects. EPA's Clean Water State Revolving Fund offers low-interest loans to eligible entities from all 50 states uh, to install new on-site systems, replace failing systems, uh, develop cluster systems or community package plans, or to set up an RME. EPA has a variety of these resources related to their Clean Water SRF, including a three-page fact sheet on financing decentralized wastewater treatment systems, which is shown on the right of the slide, or right side of the slide. Uh, the, the fact sheet highlights the different ways states can use the Clean Water SRF to finance on-site wastewater projects, and basically gives you a step-by-step -step, uh, process to start a financing program. USDA also has several loans focused on helping low-income rural households with low-interest loans or grant funding to install, repair, or modernize on-site wastewater systems. Uh, the Rural Decentralized wa Water Systems Grant Program is one of them. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, as well as the U.S. Economic Development Administration, also provides community funding programs, which can be used on any wastewater infrastructure project. But if you want to learn more about those individual funding opportunities, the fact sheet will give you a brief introduction to those funding opportunities. Uh, now, many of the best practices and funding resources aren't as effective without effective public outreach to address the challenges of improperly maintained and failing septic systems to homeowners. Uh, every September, EPA and various organizations take part in the Septic Smart Week uh, event to raise awareness and get homeowners to care and maintain their septic systems. Uh, various outreach materials and resources have been developed by EPA, which can be used by states, local health departments, and communities to increase, increase homeowner education about on-site systems. Uh, some of these resources include the Homeowner's Guide, which is a nine-page brochure on best practices to maintain a septic system, and it helps homeowners to understand common causes of septic system failures and how to identify signs of failing septic system. Additional brochures are also available highlighting information like do and don'ts for septic systems, which is shown in the left image, proper landscaping around septic systems, and quick tips for keeping a septic system healthy. All these uh, resources are printable resources, and they are also available in the Spanish language for communities with larger Spanish-speaking populations. Additional materials available include short videos, which can be featured on social media platforms, uh, posters and mailers, which can be mailed to homeowners, and case studies showcasing how organizations have successfully implemented these outreach programs. There are also several resources for tribal communities as well. Uh, EPA developed a tailored version of the Homeowner's Guide for Tribal Communities in cooperation with the Indian Health Services, the Tribal Management of On-Site Wastewater Treatment Systems Guide, which is shown on the right. Uh, is also available to help tribal communities determine what level of management or tribal regulation will work best to ensure public health and protect the environment. Uh, using RMEs and tribal communities are also highlighted as well. Uh, all these resources can be found through EPS, EPA Septic Smart Education Material webpage, uh, which is on the URL shown at the bottom of the page. And all, for all these resources I mentioned, they are links associated with them, uh, where, to exa where exactly to quickly access those links. Um, if you're interested in getting the slides or copy of the slides of the presentation, please feel free to email me. My, I'll show my email address at the end of, the, of this presentation, but um, I'll be more than happy to send you these slides so you can easily access the resources mentioned today. Uh, I also wanted to highlight um, additional on-site wastewater resources for tribal communities or for those working closely with tribes. 
Uh, many tribal communities have moved towards a wastewater treatment model focused on centralized wastewater treatment, but there will still always be communities or homes that can't be easily served by centralized wastewater treatment systems due to their, you know, whether it being located in a remote location or, you know, maybe it's an economic area that's preventing uh, those tribal homes to be able to connect to the centralized wastewater systems. So it's important for tribal communities and homes to have a strategy for managing decentralized systems or on-site systems. Um, and hopefully these resources will help uh, homeowners and communities with our tribal homeowners and tribal communities with that. So the first resource shown on, the, on this slide is helping solve wastewater challenges in Indian country. It's a manual, it's a 56 page manual uh, developed by the University of Minnesota Extension. And it provides tribal community members and wastewater professional guidance on how to access and find solutions to community wastewater issues in the Indian country. The guide recommends the use of a four phase process, which takes into account considerations specific to Indian country, which will likely improve the success of developing and implementing tribal focused wastewater projects. The four phases pro process includes generating a community wastewater assessment report, uh, exploring septic system design options, choosing the most appropriate wastewater treatment system with the management and maintenance plan. Um, all residents can participate in and implementing those solutions. Uh, case studies are also included, which outlines the steps followed from phase one to four. The guide also includes useful tools such as the septic system operation and maintenance assessment tool, which can be used to determine the overall risk level of a septic system, uh, tips for running an effective meeting to discuss wastewater management needs with communities, uh, templates on EP approved standard operating procedures for a septic system inventory, surveys which can be sent to homeowners to better understand their septic systems, and septic system inspection forms uh, for homeowners and wastewater professionals which can be used to assess individual septic systems. It's a very comprehensive manual. Uh, New Mexico University also has a manual to assist tribes to better understand proper on-site wastewater management practices and helps tribes to develop a management plan that's more economically reasonable socially responsible and environmental friendly than uh, the current practices they may be following. So the manual provides a historical overview of how wastewater has been managed in tribal lands, in, specifically in New Mexico, and highlights how Indian Health Services provides, has provided sanitation facilities and services in tribal lands. The image to the left shows how the man, manual looks like uh, once accessed. Uh, there is a chapter on soil and site inspection, which includes a task list to properly assess sites for on-site wastewater system and a detailed overview of soil properties to provide individuals the theoretical understanding to perform a simple soil assessment on their own to help determine important factors such as hydraulic conductivity and proper drain field sizes. Other chapters provide a more technical review of individual treatment systems, including conventional septic systems, passive advanced treatment systems, including media filters, uh, mechanical systems that utilize mechanical components like pumps and blowers, uh, and even disinfection techniques using chlorination, uh, UV rays, or ozone. Wastewater reuse and conservation methods such as agriculture reuse and groundwater recharge processes are also covered. Uh, each chapter is more, again, more technical, but it really highlights how these different on-site wastewater management methods have been proven to work and uh, it guides users who are looking at this manual to better understand how to implement these methods. Uh, EPA also has a video recording from their past webinar series covering the operation and maintenance and management of water and wastewater utilities serving tribes. One of the webinar is a 28 minute webinar recording and covers the management and operation of wastewater systems. The presentation provides an overview of how to properly select on site system sites, how to perform site inspections, uh, and perform maintenance to maximize the life of the system. Additional topics covered include things to avoid, such as using garbage disposal since they may overload septic systems and avoiding toxic substances like medi uh, medicine or medication from entering a septic system as it can harm the necessary bacteria inside a septic tank to actually treat wastewater. Uh, EPA's recommended management models and recommendations are also provided as tools that highlights techniques tribes have used to manage on-site wastewater systems. Uh, these webinar recordings can be found on YouTube and on EPA's webpage for tools and resources for small and rural wastewater systems. And the final tribal and on-site focused resource I wanted to highlight today is the Decentralized Wastewater Treatment Systems Planning Handbook by the North Coast Resource Partnership. It's a 73-page handbook 
which is intended to introduce the idea of using cluster systems in tribal communities and to provide basic tools for readers uh, to perform preliminary planning for these cluster systems. Uh, and just to give you a basic understanding, if, you, um, if you've never heard of the term cluster systems before, uh, cluster systems are community on-site wastewater systems that collect wastewater from multiple homes and treats and disperses treated wastewater at a site near the cluster of homes. Um, it's a new way to, instead of ra rather than having these multiple septic systems, it's just a better way to have a single system that treats all of their community's wastewater once you have less um, septic system or the onsite wastewater water systems that's required for maintenance. Uh, and it's a, uh, a lot of communities have been switching to cluster systems. Uh, the tool will, that I mentioned will also assist readers to answer questions like why a cluster system should be considered, um, the advantage and disadvantage of using a cluster systems, the costs associated with it, um, maintenance that's required for um, most common cluster systems, and again, the management that's required for maintaining or managing those systems. The handbook also provides three examples of preliminary investigations evaluating the possibility of installing cluster systems in uh, Hoopa Valley, California. Uh, the valuations, estimated construction and maintenance costs, uh, whether they are practical depending on the site conditions and the level of management um, required. So the, uh, those are the on-site resources that I wanted to highlight today. There are still many great resources out there from various organizations, but I hope that I was able to introduce on-site related resources that you weren't aware of that you can take back to your community and use when evaluating your community wastewater management needs. Uh, now I'll transition and highlight some of the more recent drinking water and municipal wastewater resources that can be used for utilities. Just to give you an idea of the other type of resources we do also feature on our website and in case there are uh, attendees here today that deal with water and wastewater or municipal drinking water and wastewater uh, treatment needs as well. So uh, the first resource that I wanted to cover is the uh, developing and maintaining a service line inventory small entity compliance guide from US EPA. Uh, since the new revised lead and copper rule has been set in place, utilities are required to complete a lead service line inventory by end of October 2024, I believe. Um, these two resources that are highlighted on this page are meant to help utilities to comply with those requirements, and they're both from EPA. So this first re resource that I mentioned is a 50-page guide. Uh, it's intended to help small systems complete initial service line inventory. The guide provides an overview on the new requirements to help explain the inventory-related actions small systems will be required to complete. It also helps utilities understand what information is required in an inventory and provides templates as well as examples to help guide utilities throughout the process. Additional information on public and state reporting requirements are detailed as well. Uh, the image on the left is from the guide highlighting what information is required in the initial inventory. Uh, it uses various graphics to help users better understand what they should be looking for during the inventory process. Uh, another resource is the funding and technical resources for lead and lead service line replacement guide. It's a 24 page guide intended to help small and disadvantaged communities find potential funding, federal funding sources and technical assistance for lead service line replacement. Uh, the guide highlights various funding sources, each providing detailed information such as funding eligibility, the application process, how much funding that they can receive, uh, the funding cycle, as well as con contact information to the funding provider. Uh, if you, those that are interested want to get more information about the funding program. Uh, PFAS is another topic that has become much more widely spread now that a national standard for six PFAS compounds have been proposed. Uh, the resource I wanted to highlight is a 42 minute EPA webinar recording from 2020, which provides an overview of EPA's research into PFAS treatment technologies and highlights the tools and resources available to help utilities better understand what treatment technologies are proven to be effective in removing PFAS and to help estimate the cost of implementing those upgrades. Uh, the presentation highlights the drinking water treat treatability database, which is an online tool that provides detailed information on various contaminants found in drinking water and treatment methods to control those contaminants. It's a great tool and all the information that comes that you can find on that that uh, treatability database comes from, I believe, thousands of literature sources on pilot scale and full scale studies. Uh, so it's a very comprehensive, very detailed. Uh, each con contaminant you can find on the page, it just gives you um, various treatment technologies that are proven to work, um, inclu uh, including the studies that are associated to help uh, users better 
choose treatment me methods that will work for their specific drinking water quality. Um, and yeah, the, through the tool, you can you can find more detailed information about PFAS and uh, proven methods to that EPA has found to treat uh, those uh, those PFAS contaminants. Another resource highlighted in the presentation is the cost and performance models, uh, which are modeling tools designed to help utilities or uh, I guess entities experience in running models to design systems using uh, specific treatment methods. So the tool evaluates the performance and costs associated with specific treatment methods and can help you to estimate the cost of implementing, for example, proven pre-pass treatment methods and estimates the performance of the actual selected treatment methods depending on the water quality criteria that they input into the model. The YouTube link uh, listed on the bottom will take you to the webinar recording and the second link on the bottom will direct you to the copy of the slides which includes link to the ex to the treatability database uh, as well as more information on the models and EPA has been working a lot with uh, enhancing more research and study into PFAS with septic system or on-site wastewater systems as well there's a lot more research related to managing PFAS even like newer more emerging contaminants like microplastics so there are a lot more research going on and hopefully there are be more resources related to PFAS and on-site that we on-site wastewater that will be able to feature on our website in the future. Uh, building a sustainable infra infrastructure is another initiative that EPA has been highlighting in the past few years. Uh, this 40-page guidebook from EPA introduces rural and small water and wastewater systems on how to effectively manage a system. Uh, the guidebook highlights the 10 key management area utilities should focus on. Uh, by improving to become a more successful, resilient, and sustainable uh, system. The guide also includes instructions on how to conduct the system assessment to help utilities prioritize areas for improvement within their system. The table shown on the right is part of the assessment itself and shows the 10 key management areas with descriptions to help utilities uh, rate their achievement level and again, decide their improvement priorities. Uh, the guidebook also lists additional resources and guidance specific to small systems on the 10 key management areas. Uh, these include GIS related resources, board member trainings, emergency preparedness resources, and much more. Uh, the guidebook can be utilized by utilities trying to make improvements, uh, even TA providers working with other systems, and just uh, it can be used to communicate with board members to uh, effectively educate them and uh, teach them about uh, system improvement needs and, and uh, passing on the information about uh, why the why how the priorities for specific improvements have been set and why those improvements are necessary to ensure uh, they're providing the public service that they're required to do. Uh, cybersecurity is another topic that has become much more popular as everything becomes more connected to the internet. In the past couple of years, there's been several incidents of critical infrastructure like uh, water utilities and wastewater utilities getting targeted by ransomware attacks and hacking attempts. Um, even though the Biden administration's plan to improve cybersecurity for public water systems was blocked a couple months ago, utilities should still be aware about the cybersecurity resources available. Uh, since there is still only very few cybersecurity resources for the water industry, I wanted to highlight this guidance document from Water ISAC. Uh, it's a 56-page guidance document. Um, it provides an overview of the cybersecurity measures for water and wastewater utilities, and it includes 15 fundamental best practices to help utilities be more secure against target attack. So some of the steps that's included in, are you know, assessing risks, securing physical access points to um, uh, mitigate unauthorized access at assets in remote locations, uh, implementing threat monitoring measures, planning for attacks, and just uh, any any step a small system can actually implement to try to prevent these cybersecurity incidents from happening. Um, and the guide also helps to utilities to develop a more cybersecurity conscious culture um, and help develop a plan, effective plan for when cyber-related incidents occur. Uh, so now that I've introduced those resources, I'll give you a quick tour of our website and guide you through how to find some of the resources we covered today. Uh, so once again, this is our homepage and you can navigate our website from our main menu bar at the top. Uh, if you're looking to find resources like fact sheets or guidebook, you can hover over the cursor over the resource library menu, uh, which will then give you an additional drop-down menu. Uh, from there, you can select the document search listed under search for documents, which will actually take you to the document library page. 
Uh, once you get to the search and search for documents page, you'll see this search module with the drop down and keyword filter text box. If you click on the drop down option, it will ask you to select a specific filter, which will be used to actually populate the library itself. So, the four filters you'll see are categories, which are a series of water and wastewater related categories I showed earlier on the pie chart. Uh, you can also search using type which represents the type of resources that are available. So fact sheets, manuals, presentations, and even videos. Uh, the state filter will be used to search for state specific resources, such as maybe resources developed by spe specific state privacy agencies or uh, state specific organizations. And um, even maybe uh, case studies that happen in certain states, uh, the state filter will help you narrow down your search for only resources specific to that state. And finally, host, which would be the host organization, which is the organization that developed the web resource or is hosting it. Um, so let's say you're trying to find more documents geared towards tribal systems and communities. Um, one of the categories that you can choose from is actually tribal. And uh, when you actually choose, when you click on a category under the drop down menu, it'll actually produce a list of the water and wastewater related categories um, as shown here. Um, so, and if you scroll through, you'll see that, uh, again, tribal is its own category. And if you select that and press retrieve or click on retrieve documents, it'll actually populate the uh, library and it'll only show the tribal related resources under the search module. So if I do that, um, as shown here, the search results have been populated and it'll also give you the total number of records of the documents we have related to that category. So in this case, we have close to 500 tribal related documents. Um, and that is kind of a lot to go through since you know, you'll have to sift through uh, 50 or 46 different pages in this case of search results. And um, as I mentioned, it does sh say showing pages one of 46. Uh, it, the search function search or the search li library search function only shows 10 results at a time. Um, you can navigate through the different pages by clicking on previous page, next page, showing on the uh, right side of the total records section. Uh, so in this case, um, since we have to go through 46 pages, that's just way too much to go through. We don't have the time to have to sift through all those different pages. Um, if that were the case, you can refine your search even more by adding another filter. Um, if you look at the search module now at the very top, there's now a second drop-down option where you can select an additional filter. So for this example, let's say you're looking for US EPA's tribal related resources. Uh, you can now select host in the second filter option, which will then give you a list of organizations which have tribal related resources. You might notice that when you use the second filter option, the drop down options uh, may be significantly less than using that filter by itself. Um, since this search function, search module uses a nested filter function, the second and third filter option takes into account of the previous filter to more efficiently provide users with search results. So now you can scroll down um, within the drop down menu and you'll eventually find US EPA. Uh, and if you click on it and retrieve documents again, that will update and refine your search results even more. And in this case, it's re, uh, narrowed our search down to 141 documents now. Uh, now, you know, that's still, a lot to kind of go through. Uh, if you wanted to refine your search even more, you can add a third filter of either resource type or state. So if you know the type of resource you're looking for, like fact sheets, guidebooks, or video recordings, you can select that type filter to refine your search even more. Or if you're looking for state specific resources, um, like case studies from a certain states or that were conducted in a certain state, you can choose the state filter. Uh, if there are certain search criteria not shown on here, you can search using the keyword filter as well. Uh, for this example, since I want to learn about decentralized wastewater for tribal communities, I've, I'll go ahead and enter decentralized wastewater into the keyword. Uh, now, if we click retrieve documents again, it has refined our search results to only 22 resources, which is much more manageable to sift through. And if you start going through the list, you will eventually find the EPA webinar recording on decentralized wastewater systems operation maintenance for tribes, uh, which was highlighted earlier um, in, this, in this webinar. Uh, for each search results, uh, we make sure to include a brief summary of the document, as well as a link to the host and where we found the document. Uh, once you decide that the search result is indeed the resource you were looking for, you can go ahead and click on that link, which should open the resource directly from the host.
Um, if you were interested in learning more about decentralized wastewater in general, one of the categories you can also search for is decentralized wastewater. Unfortunately, you can't search using the same filter, so you can't search using two categories, or in which case, in this case, you can't search using the tribal category and decentralized category at the same time. But the keyword filter should resolve that issue. Um, but if you, if we look just like just at the total number of decentralized wastewater resources, you can see that we have close again 500 documents. Um, the search result in this case will include resources for both tribal system as well as municipalities and communities. Uh, for example, the first search result you get in this case is a copy of a conference presentation from now Rus 22 onsite wastewater mega conference and it highlights the challenges of utilizing septic system in the black belt region of Alabama where they don't have the geology <clears throat> suited for septic systems, as well as the many EJ uh, issues their residents are experiencing. The presentation suggests various strategies to tackle the many issues those communities are facing with their wastewater management. Um, so again, we when it, all the resources we list here are again public and available resource. Uh, we don't we try not to take credit of it. We always link back to the host organization. We're, we're again just providing a means to help you search for these resources easier rather than having to uh, navigate the host organization's website trying to find that specific resource under you know hundreds of pages. Um, I again, I also mentioned that our nationwide calendar is another tool that is featured on our website. Um, if we're, on the calendar, we display all the water and wastewater related events that we have collected from various organizations. Uh, again, we mainly focus on collecting information on events that offer CUs for operators. Um, and it's meant, it's a tool meant to help operators uh, have an easier time finding training opportunities compared to ha having to juggle between, you know, various training providers' websites. Uh, you can access the calendar tool by clicking on the events calendar on the menu bar at the top, which will bring you to the new page with an empty calendar and a search filter similar to the document search tool. Uh, you can populate the calendar by selecting appropriate filters. Uh, we have, again, category, which are the water and wastewater related categories uh, that it's shares the same cat or most shares mostly the same categories as the document side uh, so it should be easily interchangeable um, there's also type which is in this case an event type so are you looking for trainings webinars conferences um, uh, online training opportunities uh, certification exams and it just you can search for any kind of trainings again that again offer CUs or is relevant for operators uh, we also have the state filter which um, will filter out events that are happening in certain states or trainings that are approved for, uh, to provide credits in that specific state. Uh, the, and there's also the one of the options, uh, the, the filter option is sponsor, which is the organization sponsoring the event. Uh, in general, we find that most operators we hear from just use the state filter since they're more interested in finding all the events that are you know approved within their state. Um, so just to give you a demonstration, uh, let's go ahead and select uh, one of the, the state filter. And we'll choose Illinois in this case, since we're based out of the uh, University of Illinois. Um, and let's say we're looking for, um, oh, so yeah, if you're looking for trainings in Illinois or a specific state, you can choose a state filter. And once you do so, it'll automatically populate the calendar. Um, these are the currently the, the trainings that are available uh, in the month of October for Illinois or for the state of Illinois or again, events approved for Illinois operators. Since a lot of many organizations that are more regional organizations, they tend to um, have events that are, uh, are approved in multiple states rather than just a single state. So we try to make sure we include all of those information and events within the search functionality. So if we look at the calendar page uh, right now, you'll see various event names as well as uh, acronyms for certain organizations. Um, if you look at October 3rd, there's a basic wastewater treatment course hosted by ERTC. Um, which is the Environmental Resource Training Center at Southern Illinois University. Uh, they're actually a great program that um, helps prepare pe pe uh, young professionals to get into the field. They offer two semester long program as well as a 10 week internship opportunities to help students get ready for the drinking water or wastewater certification exam. And uh, graduates are actually eligible to take both the Illinois and Missouri certification exam. So, uh, you know, for their, uh, and for days where there are more than two trainings, the calendar condenses the names of the events and just shows the organization's acronym. But if you hover over the acronym, you'll, you will see the pop-up with the full event name. So for example, on October 24th, there's also an event hosted by Illinois Section AWWA. If I hover over their acronym, it'll show that the event is a free small system operator pro training program. Um, if you notice that there's too many events showing, you can also use additional filter to narrow your search down. Let's say you're looking for online training opportunity rather than in-person trainings. 
you can select a new filter type, which will then give you a list of event types. Um, if you choose webinar live online, it will only show, again, online training opportunities or virtual training opportunities. Um, I do have to add that we only add live events with an instructor, so no self-paced courses, which you can complete on your own time. Um, and with all the non-virtual events filtered out, we can actually see the results have been refined uh, significantly, and we actually see the event from Illinois Section AWWA once again. So, But now we also see their full name because the non uh, virtual ones has been filtered out. So let's say you're interested in this event and you want to learn more, you want more information about it, you can then click on event name, which will then open up a new window, including all the relevant information about the training. Uh, this is how that new window looks like. We make sure to include all the relevant information, like, you know, uh, start date, location, uh, details, how many credited offers, costs, membership costs, non-membership costs, uh, contact information. And if all of the information you found on here is you know, is applicable to you, you can click on the link listed under event info to actually access the host organization or the sponsor organization's website and to register for the event itself. So those are the two tools that I wanted to mention today. And I believe they're the most popular in wateropera.org. Um, but I also do want to highlight some of the other tools that we have in our website very quickly. Um, one of them is our blog page where we highlight recent news or we focus on a single topic and showcase resources related to that topic. Uh, Blog posts can also be filtered out using certain categories, and one of the categories we do have is on-site as well, and shown on here is an example of a blog post which highlights resources to educate community members on ways to avoid damages caused by fats, oils, or grease, or fog in septic systems. Uh, it includes resources such as the septic smart, we, uh, septic smart resources um, with, from the EPA, which we highlighted earlier as well as a FOG toolkit on best practices for effective grease control, um, and even videos which can be used to spread awareness about FOG. We also have three newsletters that we send out monthly or bi-weekly electronically. The first is our most popular standard wateroperator.org uh, bi-weekly newsletter, which highlights uh, recent news, upcoming free webinar, free events, as well as some of the resources found in our library. It's meant, again, geared more towards our municipal and water, drinking water and wastewater operators. Uh, we also have an Innovations for Small Systems newsletter, which is our monthly newsletter where we highlight recent news on innovations in water and wastewater management, uh, with a focus on small systems as well as recent publications such as research papers and journals. And finally, our third is our tribal newsletter, which is geared more towards our operators of tribal communities. Uh, all three of these newsletters cover drinking water topics, municipal wastewater topics, and even on-site wastewater topics if you're interested in learning more. Uh, you can get to our newsletter page uh, through the top menu bar on our website. Uh, you can also access there to, reg uh, to actually sign up for individual newsletter as well as look at our past archives. Um, and another tool I wanted to feature is our tribal contact manager, which lists all of our national, state, and regional groups that serve tribal water and wastewater systems and, op and operators, including names and contact information from over 200 staff. Uh, we developed this tool for those who are looking to work with tribal communities to easily find the best point of contact. Uh, by using the organization and state region filter, users can search for providers assisting tribes within a designated geographic area. So for in, in this example here, I have selected RTAP as the organization and Great Lakes RTAP as the office region. Uh, so this would be an example where someone is trying to get in contact with RTAP staff who works with tribes within the Great Lakes region. Uh, once the correct filters are entered, users will see the highlighted portion of the table. And if users click on the organization name in the highlighted area, a new window will open up with the correct contact information. And in this example, we get Shawnee Ford from Great Lakes RCAP. Uh, we are also currently in the process of going through reaching out to all of our contacts on this tool to make sure all the contact information is updated. Um, if you want more information or actual guidance on how to use this tool, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to give you a more detailed demonstration. So that concludes my present today. Um, if you get a chance to use wateroper.org and want into any questions, please feel free to contact me or, or my supervisor, Steve Wilson. Our emails and phone numbers are shown here. Or if you scroll to the bottom of our website, you can find our contact or information as well. Uh, if you, and if you, again, would like a copy of this presentation so you can easily access those resources mentioned today, I'll be more than happy to send you a copy of this, uh, of the presentation if you send me an email. Uh, I guess, uh, Jennifer, do we have any questions? There's no questions at this time. All right, awesome. Um, I guess we can give it another minute to see if anyone wants to ask any questions. Again, there is a question section on the GoToWebinar platform. Um, 
please feel free to enter any of them now. If you get more questions, again, after you, you actually get a chance to use our website, um, please feel free to email us. Uh, we love talking to operators. We love talking to communities. Um, we'll be more than happy to try to help you find the resource you need or, again, help you connect to the proper folks that can help uh, you or your community out. All right, I guess it doesn't look like we have any questions coming in. So uh, that's pretty much it for today. Again, thank you for your time. Um, and I hope everyone has a nice rest of the day. Thank you.